contrived. The series still rated high with theater owners, no matter how tiresome some scenes appear today. When he sold the rights to MGM, uh, it went fine for a while, because they, they kept the nucleus of the gang, you know, they kept me and they kept Al Bob and Spanky and Darla, and then Gosh, I was in the gang seven or eight years, and I was 13 years old before I left the gang, and I was just getting too big, you know. So uh, then they started replacing us with other kids, and they just, when the war started, it died. Different writing, different budgets. Uh, the idea of the producers of what was good entertainment then, uh, the idea of the producers of what of what position and level that the children should take in a grown society. Uh, probably a combination of all those things. Um, different writing, uh, different attitudes, social attitudes at the time. The final MGM Our Gang picture made was appropriately titled Tale of a Dog and featured one of the series' longest sustaining cast members, Buckwheat who had all too obviously outgrown the series. In the spring of 1944, Our Gang was no more. But there were hundreds of Our Gang graduates, and in a moment, we'll trace the lives of 40 of the main characters. If you had a chance to do all this over again, would you do it? Why, certainly, I'd be glad to do it all over again. Not even going to think about that question. Huh? No, I, I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ernie Morrison, Sunshine Sammy, the first featured Our Gang member, worked in vaudeville and B-films, including the East Side Kids series after leaving Our Gang. As an adult, he worked in the aerospace industry. Jackie Condon unsuccessfully tried to re-enter show business a number of times. He worked at Rockwell International and died at 59 in June of 1977. Farina was Alan Hoskins, who made his home in Oakland, California, as the director of the Alameda County Association for the Mentally Retarded. Give me the rejects, he would say. I can work with people who are nobodies. I love these people. He died in 1980. His widow, Franzi, still lives in Oakland. His sister, Jane, played Mango, also lives in the Bay Area. Rumors that Mickey Daniels was killed in a construction accident in Australia have not been confirmed. He worked for Bechtel Corporation until 1966, then dropped from sight. Daniels' chief cinema love interest was Mary Cornman. She remained in films for a time, appearing in some B-Westerns. She died of cancer in 1973. Her sister Mildred goes by Ricky Van Dusen, a successful fashion model. Jackie Davis, the silent era tough kid, became Dr. John H. Davis, a West Los Angeles physician. Joe Frank Cobb, like Jackie Condon, worked at North American Aviation in Downey, California as an adult. He's retired and lives in a small apartment not far from the former site of the Culver City Hal Road Studios. Peggy Ahern Blaylock and her husband have retired to an exclusive area near Hollywood. Their son, William Blaylock Jr., is with Time Magazine. We're all good friends. There's certainly such a unity in a group you'll never see in six or seven young people. Still semi-active is Eugene Pineapple Jackson, who performed in vaudeville as well as films and later television as Uncle Lou in the series Julia with Diane Carroll. He and his family live in Compton, California. We had a ball. Yeah. We had a ball. Johnny Downs had a fairly successful film career in musicals. He finally made his show business home local TV in Southern California. Bobby Young was bone dust in the early sound films. He later became Clifton Young, played minor film characters, and died in a 1951 hotel fire. He fell asleep while smoking in bed. J.R. Smith is retired from the retail paint business and now divides his time between his home in Hawaii and traveling on the mainland. It was just a very nice time in my life. And as I get older, well, it gets more valuable. Gene Darling preferred Broadway and the theater to celluloid. 
Recently widowed, she now lives in Ireland where she writes children's stories and performs on radio. Bobby Hutchins played Weezer in the late silent and early sound films. He was killed in his late teens during World War II in a plane crash as he was about to receive his wings. No nonsense, Mary Ann Jackson retired from the gang at age eight. She has a son and daughter and lives in the San Fernando Valley. Norman Myers Cheney, chubby. He left the series and show business at 13. By his late teens, he had ballooned to 300 pounds, underwent surgery for a glandular ailment, and dropped to less than half his weight. He died in Baltimore, Maryland at the age of 18 in May of 1936. After Skippy, Jackie Cooper starred in The Champ and Treasure Island, both with Wallace Beery. Then some B pictures, and then he starred on Broadway and later television in The People's Choice in Hennessy. He's an Emmy Award winning director and occasionally performs in films such as the Superman trilogy. He remembers people and events, but little today of the Our Gang films themselves. Some of them you can remember. I can tell you what's coming next. But most that I see I don't even remember it at all. Isn't that interesting? Dorothy Adele de Borba left the series, eventually landed in Montana, and then Berkeley, where she worked in the journalism department of the University of California. Little Echo is the mother of two. It seems nice to, to think so many generations have watched the gang. As a teenager, Matthew Stymie Beard found the world outside the gang difficult. He eventually became a heroin addict and for years bounced from the street to the jail cell. The Synanon Rehabilitation Program changed his life and he found occasional work in television character roles. Oh, Stymie was a dear person. He died in 1981. After our gang in the Mickey Maguire series, Shirley Jean Rickard joined the Air Corps as a truck driver during World War II. During the 50s, she was a burlesque stripper, Gilda, and her crowning glory. Today, she's successful businesswoman Shirley Jean Measures. Sherwood Bailey, Donald Haynes, and Kendall McComas have all vanished. Upon leaving the gang, Spanky McFarland moved back to his native Texas, and over the years entered many businesses, from making popsicles and selling hamburgers, to hosting a Tulsa, Oklahoma kitty show and operating a restaurant. For a number of years, he's found success as a public relations representative at Philco Ford, is married and the father of two. Tommy Bond followed the gang films with small roles in larger pictures, appearances in the Gas House gang films with Alfalfa Schweitzer, and was the original Jimmy Olsen in the Superman serials of the 40s. He moved behind the cameras in Los Angeles television and now works in Fresno, California. Well, I don't think they'll ever be able to replace the gang. You know, they've tried to make other pilots and other series uh, with different kids, and it just doesn't work out because I think we were of that time. In 1942, Dickie Moore gave Shirley Temple her first screen kiss. He acted in and directed many features, was public relations counsel for Actors' Equity for seven years, and operates his own New York public relations firm. Until recently, the identity of the character known only as Uh-huh was not known. He's been identified as Red Jackson, whereabouts unknown. Wally Albright remained in films through the mid-40s, but sports was more interesting to him. He's won hundreds of water sports trophies and has even built his own boats. Jackie Lynn Taylor Freeze and her husband Jack are both ministers. They've co-hosted the syndicated Little Rascals Family Theater for some years and are among the most active in perpetuating interest in the series and information on former gang members. I'd love to do it again. It's more fun talking about it now and what it's done because we were one of a kind. Scott Hastings Beckett attended the University of Southern California and made films steadily into his 20s. He was the Space Ranger sidekick to Rocky Jones, the early TV series. Twice divorced with one son, he drifted into the drug world. In 1968, after suffering a serious beating, he died of a probable suicide at 38. Leonard Kibrick was the original bully of the talkies. He continued to act until entering the service, later became a talent scout, and is now a San Fernando, California building contractor. His brother, Sidney Kibrick, was also a heavy, the Woin, and he's also a Los Angeles area developer. Billy Thomas played buckwheat for most of his decade with the gang. Rumors of his death in a plane crash while flying emergency rations to Biafra were false. He'd been a film technician with Technicolor for 20 years. He 